Romano said that he hasn't been sleeping well since the Bahamas. So he kind of took it for Did you get that sense that he might kind of come out with it a night like tonight? Well, I, I know that, you know, he felt that from a scoring standpoint, he wasn't as efficient as he wanted to be in the Bahamas and he wanted to be better um, on the offensive end. And, you know, the last couple of days of practice were real for him. He was locked in and wanted to make sure he's watching film with myself and Coach May and just wanted to continue to learn and bounce back. And, you know, I talked to him about, you know, for any player, it's, it's you know, they're going to be rainy days and they're going to be sunny days, but what is your response? And so let's bounce back. And, and I was just really proud of him. I thought, you know, his ability to consistently score down low on the paint, get fouled, get us into the penalty. Um, I've said this before, I think a huge growth in his game that may have goes, you know, overlooked is his free throw shooting. It's He's getting to the free throw line. He's making them, and um, I was really happy for him tonight. And my hope is that he can get sleep tonight. <laughs> what did you like best about the way you guys ran your offense in the first half in particular? Yeah, I just our, our pace was good in the first half. And, you know, it all starts with defense and rebounding. We knew that Tennessee is very physical and <coughs> is they'll crash a number of guys to the offensive glass. Um, I felt like in the first half we, we were able to get out in transition. One of the things that we do really well is when we pitch the ball ahead in transition, I think that's the fastest way to get to early offense. We were able to get layups and dunks, deep post catch, wide open threes. Um, in the half court, and you know, Tennessee is, if not the best, one of the best defensive teams in the country. I thought our spacing and our ball and player movement was good. I felt like we were able, we were able to beat them off the bounce and get them into rotations. And, from an offensive standpoint, it was one of the better halves that I've, since I've been here for 12 years as assistant and as a head coach, it was pretty special. You mentioned pitching it ahead. Armando had a couple of rim to rim buckets and yeah. Elliott found him. Yeah. That wasn't there very often last year. How much does having Elliott out there on the floor and his ability to bear fruit when the guys are going rim to rim? Well, I think, yes, it is. Elliott has a gift and a talent to not only distribute and pass the ball, but also distribute and pass the ball to a player where he can actually do something with it. And he's just instinctively just really special in that area. But also, it's also our wings running and it's Armando running too. So it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a full team effort and a commitment that we made at the at the beginning of the year is that you know we wanted our pace to be faster we wanted to be a running team and, and even off of a made basket we want to get the ball out quickly and we want to be the one of the fastest teams if not the fastest team from free throw line to free throw line and then when we get into our plays let's run them with purpose and pace you what can you say on the topic of elliot he told me you guys had a meeting it was two days after the lehigh game that was really impactful he said that you just said, I believe in you. Mm -hmm. And you said you really need to hear that. Just do you remember that meeting and what do you think the impact was on it? What did you tell them? I do, but I, I mean, I, I talked to the players like a lot during the week, you know, I told you I, I require them to stop by the office so that we can have conversations, not just about basketball, but you know, as talented as Elliot is, it, it's still a, a huge jump from, from high school to to this level and just wanted to encourage him that I was really proud of him and um, how hard he's working um, on the defensive end and in practice and that he continues just to get better and better and so um, um, I enjoy spending time with him as well as enjoy spending time with all the players and having those type of conversations. Hubert, what can you say about Cormac's toughness playing through the ankle injury? You said you weren't certain he was going to play. He didn't practice. Yeah. He didn't practice. You know, he didn't play in the game against Arkansas. Um, we got back from the Bahamas on Saturday, had Sunday off. He didn't practice Monday or Tuesday. And after practice Tuesday, he came up to my office and he said, I'm playing. And I said, I said, okay, <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> and, um, you know, there's a sense of urgency for him. Um, this, you know, there's no more extra year for him and um, his intensity and passion and a desire to be a part of a team and to be good um, 
is exactly what this team has needed, and he came up big tonight. Have you ever had a player do that, just tell you I'm playing when they hadn't practiced like before the game? That's what I want. I don't want them to go, I'm not playing. I, I want them I want them to say, it, it, and when he said that, it wasn't I'm playing, I'm leaving office. He, he was said it in a way where he wanted to be out there to help the team and he felt like he was well enough to be able to do it. And that's exactly what you want to hear from a player. What did you notice about the level of execution you guys had in the first half and, and, and what was going on with Tennessee's defense where you kind of like, you kept, you kept catching them sleeping or whatever and you guys kept that flow going. What did you notice from that first half? Well, it was our pace in transition, whether it was a missed shot or a made shot, I felt like we got into our offense quick and, and early and um, I felt like our spacing and our, and our movement was really good. I mean, I think we had 19 assists. You know, one of the things that I said is, you know, you want to be good to great. And I felt like our passing, we had good shots and then we passed them up to get great shots. The only thing that, uh, you know, we shot a lot of threes and we were making them. There was a point where half of our shots were from three point range. And so, you know, before the game we had talked about, we wanted to dominate and attack the basket through post penetration and offensive rebounds. Then we started to attack the basket and that allowed us to get into the penalty and shoot free throws. Players have they wanted to send a message tonight. Um, did, that, did that come from, from you or do you think it came from them? What message? Basically coming off of the Atlantis, they felt like they really they had a chance to win that tournament and they want to come out tonight and, and show that they were a top team. Well, I, you know, I, before the game, you know, and leading up to it, I, we, we have talked about uh, there's only two things that you're really in control of is how you react and how you respond to things. And, you know, what is our response and coming back home and uh, putting on that uniform and running out of that tunnel and playing on that floor in front of 22,000 fans. And so um, it's all about the thing that we're is just trying to get better and trying to improve every every day, every game. I feel like we took a step forward in terms of our improvement and becoming the team that we want to become. But I told them after the game, I also was very encouraged because there's a training tape out there on things that we cannot do and that we can get a lot better at, particularly in the second half. Hang on. Adam, then Andrew, then Brenda. Hubert, over here. Yep. Uh, a couple of guys said that the intensity in practice the last couple of days was pretty high. And I believe Harrison said, you would have thought we went 0-3 in the Bahamas the way we practiced and gotten after it. Like, what what, what was the message you were trying to send or what was the point you were trying to get across uh, the last couple of days? Well, I'm, I'm an emotional guy and I, I get after them every practice. The, the thing that, that, that gets me is a lack of effort and a lack of concentration. And so coming back from the Bahamas, I wanted to let them know that what was coming here tonight was real. It was a Tennessee team. I, I've said this before. I've known Coach Barnes since I was 16. He, he, he's an incredible coach. And I, you know, they had one of the better teams in the country and they just come off of two losses. I wanted to let them know what was coming here tonight. And even though that we returned home, that like this was going to be, this was going to be a battle. And I wanted to put them in a mindset that uh, we're coming here to compete and coming here to improve and the, the practices leading up to the game, I, I thought were really, um, really spirited and really good. Andrew, they cut it to seven. You guys had a quick eight <clears throat> spurt, and they cut it again, but you guys were able to fight them off. How did you like the way the team responded to that run that they made? I do. I like the way that we responded in, in those times where we needed to make free throws, we needed to get the ball in bounds, we needed to be get a rebound, we needed to make a play, and that's. That is what their job and their requirement is. But also there's things that it's, it's nice to learn, you know, after a win, there's some things that we definitely need to learn and grow from in terms of what allowed them to catch up and cut it to seven. And so, you know, from a defensive standpoint, execution on the offensive end, making free throws, taking care of the basketball and, and just staying locked in when you have a big lead. Brandon, then two more if there are any. Go ahead, Brandon. RJ Armando said that they both remember the last time you guys played Tennessee. I don't know. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Did you get a sense, do you feel a sense of catharsis in any way because of that or anything else? Well, it was a different team, and they were a different team, but I do remember getting cooked up at the Mohegan Sun my first year, and 
Um, not that tonight was payback, but it, just remembering what Tennessee brings. You know, their intensity, their physicality, the talent they have out there on the floor, and their response of coming off of two tough losses in Honolulu. And so um, remembering that to put us in a position to compete tonight. And I felt like the guys that were there, because most of the guys on our team weren't there, they were on other teams. And so they, they don't remember that, but I'm glad that Armando and RJ did because they played really well tonight. Last two, Jeremiah, then Rob. Hubert, uh, just how beneficial has it kind of been in the early going to get different, you know, kind of, you know, starting five? I know obviously it's early, but with a team that doesn't have as much in-game experience together, how beneficial kind of is, I know the Bahamas, you guys got a chance to use three different lineups. Like, how beneficial is that seeing the different combinations? Well, I, I think what's really beneficial is the teams that we're playing. I mean, just mention the last four, Northern Iowa, uh, Villanova, Arkansas, and, and Tennessee, just totally different styles and so at high levels and so for us to be able to you know to compete and to adjust and to be able to play against different types of styles and then the level of talent that we're playing against is very encouraging and uh, very helpful for us in terms of moving forward and being the best that we can be. Last one Rod. Hubert, it feels like every time we talk to Harrison, he talks about how thankful he is to be a Carolina basketball player and the emotion, the energy, the aggressiveness from him. What's it like for you to see that on a daily basis and then in the first half tonight, the way he got y'all rolling? No, I just love that. You know, it's, it's a privilege to be here. <coughs> it just is. There's a number of people that wish that they could put on that uniform and run out of that tunnel and play on that floor and play on this type of stage. And to me, what I think it is required here in order to be the best that you can be, there has to be a motivation out of thankfulness for being a part of this program. And Harrison has that every day. His smile on his face in practice, shoot arounds, not just in games. Um, it spreads to everybody on the team. You see it in Cormac, you see it in Armando. This is, there's no more years for Armando. You, you, you know, it, it, you see that. And to play in a game like that with that type of crowd is not many people get a chance to do it. And when you get a chance to do something like that, um, a part of your motivation is coming from a thankfulness. That's something that's really special and required here to be the best that you can be. Coach, thank you. Yeah. One note. Uh,